This episode is sponsored by the Bridge to Recovery, a nonprofit program on 115 acres near Bowling Green, Kentucky, a tranquil place where they've been changing lives for over 40 years. Their people improve their quality of life by acknowledging past emotional wounds and healing from all forms of trauma. The CEO, Paul Hamlin, has been a friend of mine for 20 years. Call him directly at 858-945-7848. That's 858-945-7848. Or you can learn more about the Bridge to Recovery by clicking the link in the show notes or visiting thebridgetorecovery.com. Thank you for listening to The Path to Authenticity. My name's Tom Gentry. I think of this show as the opposite of small talk. You'll hear real conversations with real people who know who they are. We talk about what makes them who they are, how they became who they are, and how we might become truer expressions of who we are. I am Mimi Langlois, and this is a path to authenticity. My name's Tom Gentry. This is the path to authenticity. Thanks for listening. Um, This episode features a conversation between me and an abstract expressionist painter named Mimi Langlois. Mimi's from Montreal. She's lived uh, in my neck of the woods in South Florida for quite a while now. You're going to hear all about her. She's led a really interesting life. And, you know, uh, Mimi and I, uh, I, I think it's safe to say that we view life fairly similarly. Um, she's one of those people who just has a gleam in her eye and is, um, just radiates love. She's, uh, she's, uh, you know, full of kindness and love and it just, it, it, you see it as soon as you look in her eyes, um, So, you know, I was, from the time I met her, attracted to her as a friend. And uh, so we have, we've become friends over the last couple of years. She's become a significant part of my support system. And um, my son's had a chance to meet her. um, And it's just a joy to have her in my life. Um, We share some similar interests, including uh, A Course in Miracles, if any of you are familiar with that. Um, that's, uh, one of the ways we met, but, um, you know, she's just someone who I feel really fortunate to know and, uh, and I really enjoy having her in my life. We had a lot of fun. Um, you know, Mimi, uh, I planned on interviewing her and writing a story about her for my blog and she was kind of the best person for me to go through this process with but you know I I sat down with her a couple different times to talk and recorded our conversations and took notes and and then when it came down to sit down came to sit down and write the story uh I just couldn't do it it just wasn't coming out and um and I don't know why you know I kept telling myself you got to write this you got to write this and then one day it hit me no, you know, I want to talk to her. I want to have a conversation and record it. And I want it to become part of this podcast. So if there was one last little thing that pushed me over the edge to really get going on this podcast, it was that series of interactions with Mimi. And she's been really great about all of it. Very warm and welcoming to me. And, uh, you know, I hope you, uh, I hope you take a look at her artwork um and and listen closely and you're you're going to hear you're going to hear about a really um fascinating human being who's led a interesting life and um you should check her out so uh i hope you enjoy my conversation with my friend Mimi Hi, how are you? I'm good. 
Good. Thank you for joining me. I'm really happy to. It's my pleasure. I'm looking forward to uh, to hearing more about you. And you know, we met a couple times before. Yes. And uh, and more than a couple. (laughs) Well, yes, we've met many times. Yes. But we met for interviews a couple times before. And uh, so I've gotten to learn a little bit about you. So yes, I've. Um, I went back over my notes and I definitely have some questions for you that I think people will be interested in hearing. So you were born in 1935 in Quebec City. Yes. And, um, do you have, what's, what's your earliest memory? I will tell you, it's the day I was born. No. Really? You can remember Oh yes. Oh yes. And, uh, I, um, one day I, um, Asked my mother, I said, Mom, uh, I had uh, the vision uh, the day I was born, and uh, it's really very clear in my memory. And I said, uh, you know, uh, I, I didn't know. I thought I was born in the hospital. And I said, no. Uh, I said, it, it was in a room, and I, you know, d- described what I saw. And she said, yes, how do you know? <laughs> yes. And uh, I remember my my grandmama was there, and the uh, the doctor, the uh, the nurse, and uh, I was telling her, and I said, "Why you were so tired?" And uh, it was like if you were not, were not there for a moment. And she was, "Oh my God, what's going on?" <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yes, now, I, I have a first. good memory of my uh, childhood now, and everything. I never yeah. have met anyone before who could actually remember. Oh yeah, that but event. I did uh, uh, very early. I start uh, meditation without that, not knowing it was that. Hmm. Yes. Oh wow. Yeah. So, so you're the second oldest of. Ten, ten children, ten yes. Children. Seven brothers, two sisters. Wow. Yeah. So what was your childhood like growing up with all those kids? Yeah, but I, I have, um, I will tell you, my uh, childhood, I had good and bad moments, of course. But um, the best and what uh, I like to remember, <laughs> of course, uh, it's... Um, up to the age of seven, uh, where I was with my grandparents, they were wealthy people, and they had time to take care of their older child, was me and my my brother. Um, it was so, the environment was so great uh, with arts, and um, what my grandpapa was, uh, the story was telling, because he was a writer himself, and he's the one who uh, started the first journal in Victoriaville, and he wrote the editor, 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 uh till he died at 80. Wow. But uh, for me, that time, that seven years, uh, really um, molded me for the rest of my life, mm-hmm. especially... Um, about arts, the manifestation of the soul. Uh, and um, in that time, I had a grand aunt. At that time, in thirty-seven, she went to China and Japan and uh, brought back furniture and painting and pottery. And to me, it was, oh, my God, I, I could spend hours just be with that. Yeah. Yes, and I was young. I was four, five, six years old. So you were very intrigued by that. Oh, yes, oh, yes. I think it it was in my nature. Yes. So, and when I look at your artwork, I definitely see that influence. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How has that, how has Asian culture influenced your visual art? Oh, completely. Because I always, even when I, I went to Japan, I felt home at home. It, it's funny. I, I cannot explain all these things, but it, it really uh, molded me in a way of... Uh, you felt the connection to it. Oh, yes, definitively, yes. Wow. Yes, yes. So, you know, when we talked before, we were talking about some of the important events in your life, and and you told me about... Your first communion. Oh, yes. Tell me about what happened that day. Uh, it, it, it's funny. I, I went back to Victoriaville to see that cathedral. I thought, because of the uh, 
remembrance of my uh, first communion, but believe me, it's a very, very small church, beautiful, all in wood. <laughs> mm-hmm. and it was, as a child, it, because the, the luminosity inside the church of that first communion, and after that, all the love around me uh, with my grandparents and uh, everything. It, I, to me, I remember every second of it. Yes. Wow. And it's, it's beautiful. The, it's more the... What I remember most is the uh, peace around all that. It's something uh, I cannot describe, but uh, I am... So it was a connection that you experienced, and that was the first time that you had an yes, experience. Yes, being really aware. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And uh, I would, today, with, my, with the years, I could say um, it was my first connection with reality. Okay. Yes. Wow. So then that was at seven years old, yes. six years old? Yes, six years and old. And now at six years old, you went to live with the nuns, right? Yes, yes. Oh, so yes. Tell me the about convent. that. Tell me yes. about that. Uh, the first experience with the nuns were beautiful. I was six, my first year. And after that, at seven, when I was 7.30, uh, my father decided to go to the army and to go in another city. And um, then my mother decided to go and join him, and we were all separate. And this uh, really uh, did a big cut in my life in a way that um, uh, it's it's like if I was in this a paradise for seven years, and then suddenly it's I'm in. A place I didn't know. I didn't know where they put me. The nuns. I didn't know. No one separate from my brothers. This really, I had to come back to that uh, separation many, many times in my life to really reconnect with my own reality, which is the reality in for me. So. Yeah. That was a very traumatic experience? It was, yes. But in that experience, at that place where they put me, uh, the night was a nightmare, and I've been through that many times. But in the morning, what saved me is I suddenly, uh, it was uh, like a farm, and the... um, the, the noise of outside of the chicken and everything it i forgot everything and it i was back in what i am in fact yeah at that moment you were able to be in the oh, moment oh yes yes be with myself my real self yes wow. yeah yeah it's amazing that at that young an age you had that sort of metaphysical sort of awareness yeah, but it's <laughs> it's well, there. I mean, yes. You know, most people you talk to, they they develop that sort of an experience much later on in life, not not before they're ten years old. So that's very unique. But it's unique to, I think, to have all the love I had. Yes. Around me, at every yeah. second, yeah. up to seven years old. Well, this I realize today. Yes. Well, and uh, speaking of love, Mimi, one of the ways that I describe you to other people when I think about you, I think about how love just radiates from your face and your eyes, and you definitely light up a room when you when you enter it. Thank you. Yeah. Um, tell me, Mimi, we talked a little bit before about your life purpose and in to you your life purpose is to be you yes spontaneity première that's what i call it for you can you trans translate that uh, for me the uh, the raw spontaneity if i can then translate if it make a sense the pure spontaneity pure spontaneity and yeah. you and so you believe that the truest version of you 
happens spontaneously. Is that right? Is that what you would say? Oh, yes, yes, yes. And, and in my life, uh, I call that serendipity. So many things happen. Um, you know, to to really to give me the best to be able to give too. Mm -hmm. it, it was it, it's fantastic. Uh, when I I look back, uh, I do believe in uh, existence, our pure existence. Yes, it's there, but we don't see it. That's the problem. And we really are love. Yes, uh, definitively. De yeah. Definitively. And uh, the minute we are aware of it, uh, it uh, gives a another dimension. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, spontaneity, that's a good way to transition into talking about your artwork a little bit. And, um, but let's say before you learned everything you learned about spontaneity, uh, before you became an ag abstract expressionist, you painted landscapes and still lives, right? Yes, because uh, I had a phase where I um, start to doubt of myself completely. And um, then um, when I went to, uh, I got married and I went to Europe. And when I came back to Europe, I had, even with the two children, I had time to me uh, and the facility. So uh, I really doubt about myself and uh, went to uh, take some course how to do painting. <laughs> and uh, that's how it everything starts with um, Serendipity, where I met Fra Jerome. Yes, yes. So I wanted to Ooh, talk to you Give me about. back what I was. <laughs> so, so I have a note here about our, from our last conversation where someone said to you, what you do is not art. Yes, so that boy me, saved my life. <laughs> tell, tell us about that story. It's uh, When I, I went to, to take this course, I had the skill to do nice landscape and flowers. So, uh, And I sold everything the minute I did exhibit. Uh, so now, just to clarify, the reason why you were painting landscapes and florals is because you knew they would sell. Is that right? No, because uh, it's, it's because uh, I doubt so much of myself, I didn't know what art was. Even if I spend a whole year just visiting museum and castle and uh, all whatever you want, where for me it was, uh, this was like music. It was not uh, something I had in my mind uh, about art. Uh, I was looking at the skill. And then when I took this course, uh, okay, people are looking for uh, something um, which um, secure them. So to sec uh, and uh, so they go for um, a memory, memory of something they seen or they they, they dream of. <laughs> uh, and if, to art, it's completely different. I realize after because. Um, Anyhow, they uh, asked me to do an exhibit for the opening of a big gallery in Montreal and because they want to sell. So I said, sure. But for that exhibit, as you said, um, I did one painting my own, not uh, with a memory, just from the silence, my own silence. And uh, I, I asked her to put that painting with the other one. And then uh, there is a little boy who came and uh, he said, oh, uh, Madame uh, Landlois, what you do is not art. So I said, what is art then? He said, uh, it's what uh, we do with Fra Jerome in the back of the college. Fra Jerome was from College Notre Dame. And uh, believe me, the day after I was, I asked him where it was and all that. The day I, and uh, the lady who was there said, don't go there, he's a crazy man and he's dangerous and blah, blah. So I was there. And um, when I met him, I asked him, I begged him, uh, because he didn't want to. When he looked at me with my new cars and my um, 
all the way I was dressed with signature. He said, I don't think it's your place here. And I said, uh, I just get in. I saw what you do, and uh, I feel at home. So I want you to come and see my exhibit. And uh, he said, oh, yes, no. I'm, and he was a very special man. And then he came. And when he looked at everything, he really take the t- took the time to look at everything. And he said, there is only one good thing, and it's that painting. And it was the one I did from my mm-hmm. silence. And boy, did I add the lesson. And I worked for him, with him 30 years. So he was your master. Oh, yeah. In a way that uh, he was uh, giving me back my confidence in what I was. Okay. Because in the middle I was, I was, it was so much everything by the book with what the other one will say or think that, um, believe me, at the beginning I was lost in all that. Mm. And uh, but I was um, I was blessed. Uh, my husband was a great doctor, well, very well known. Uh, had that soul, and he always uh, agree with what I was uh, discovering about me. And um, so he was very supportive of your. Oh yes, he was very supportive. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Definitely. But always saying, don't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want his friends to know everything oh, you were no, up to? Oh, no, no, no. And even all the, the thing I, I went for, for monastery after, I went for um, diving under ice and all that stuff. And he always saying, Mimi, do you really need that? And I was saying, yes. So he was saying, don't tell anyone. Don't tell the family. <laughs> So tell me tell me about Frere Jerome. Frere Jerome it was a little bit, I would say, like um, Bourdieu in Canada and uh, Polak in the United States who changed uh, the old... Jackson Pollock. Yes, yes Jackson Pollock, who changed... Uh, they were so much themselves that with their um, manifestation to the him painting and him he was not only painting he was talking to uh, uh, he changed the way of uh, seeing painting uh, to and expressing uh, art to to where it's really an outward expression of your inward yes. experience yeah, exactly yes and that's really what your art is right yes oh yes definitively yeah. Yes, yes. So um, so he was an artist. A great artist. And oh, yes. And he changed many, many things in the, the way. Of course, Quebec at this moment was in a big uh, uh, revolution of uh, changing everything, you know. Uh, we were, the domination was uh, the church. And um, he was uh, himself a... Uh, belong to the church, but uh, he was against all that, and it was really <laughs> special. <laughs> yeah, he, he told me that that he, he was a little more aligned with Eastern thought himself, right? Yes, and even now, it's, uh, even now it's difficult for the Quebecois to accept him. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. Even if he's dead for uh, years. <laughs> so then, Mimi, when, tell me about how Buddhism became a part of your life? Uh, I've been always very curious and uh, a big reader. And then uh, one day I uh, start to read uh, the book of uh, Kaplow, who was one of the first uh, American who, who wrote a book about Buddhism. Uh, he wrote here in the United States. And then um, I had my curiosity I just uh, went to his monastery uh, and um, went for, a, we call that a session. Uh, we spend seven days in meditation and uh, so it lecture. A, it was a retreat. Yes, a retreat. And then um, from that serendipity, um, I received from, 
I, I never knew who sent that to me, an invitation to go for a retreat in California with uh, Sazaki. And um, don't ask me how it came, but I just told my husband on a Saturday, Claude, if you don't mind, you'll be very busy next week. If you want, I will go to California for that retreat. I don't know who sent me that invitation, but it seems to be... You, you can uh, interview him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of the him. things I forgot to mention before we started to record is to turn our phones on to silent. So uh, that will be... This is a learning experience for me, this uh, this podcast thing and learning how to use all this equipment as uh, an astute listener of this particular podcast will probably be able to tell that we had to pause a couple different times and (laughs) and get things sorted out and you know we're uh, moving mics around and stuff like that so please uh, be patient with us but so the man who you uh, went to the retreat to study under, what was his name? Sazaki. And now is that the man who taught you karate? No. No, no. that wasn't. Karate was another one. What was uh, his name? Because uh, there were similar names, right? No. 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 What uh, was his name? Gilbert. Gilbert. Okay. I'm, then Gilbert. I don't know what I'm That's another of. guy. <laughs> so you went to a seven-day retreat? Yes, retreat. Was it at Esalen or... It was, no, it was um, Mont Baldi in California. Okay. Uh, he has a monastery. And he died recently, maybe five years ago, and he was under, uh, under three. <laughs> he died at 103? Oh, yes. And, oh, yes. So, um, so then that was a transformative experience, too? Oh, for, oh yes. It was um, very important. Very important. Yes. And so, you know, Asian culture has had an influence on your entire life, right? From the beginning. And if you don't mind, for the listeners, how old are you, Mimi? Yes, I'm 84. No. I'll be 84 in June. I, in fact, I will tell you the truth. I don't have any age. That's my reality. <laughs> I don't believe in that. No, I will have to swallow that to believe in it. Okay. No. Well, and I'm very healthy. And, well, uh, I, you but know, I learned from the Buddhist though how to cure myself. This I learned, and it's. Uh, I wish I can even my student I had in Montreal. When when people are not ready, it's no use. You know, they think you're crazy. So I say okay, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I use it for myself. Well, <laughs> now. When I was on my way over here, I was talking on the phone to a friend, and I was describing you to her, and I would have guessed that you were in your early 60s. Thank you. I mean, you look so... You don't look old enough <laughs> to be I don't have any age. I don't have no, any that's, age. You Come definitely on. don't. You're, you, you transcend age. That's... I just been uh, three weeks ago for all the uh, medical exam. I, he, the medical exam, and they they couldn't believe what they saw. Yes, <laughs> you're 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 a work of art yourself. So, so then you also you're a black belt. Yes. <laughs> tell me about that. <laughs> How did that take place? I, I will tell you the truth. When my my uh, children uh, went to college and after the university, I said I had. Plenty of time, and uh, it was no question of money. So I decide now it's my turn. I always want to do martial art, and I will go for my pleasure. And I just start like this, one belt, second belt, third <laughs> belt, and end up with the black belt. The same thing with diving. Um, I, my husband was a, a, a good sport, too, and we for vacation we used to go to a club med in different country. And um, I start to do diving. And then when I came back, I said, oh, they gave course here for the um, the policemen, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, in Quebec, it had to be under yes. ice diving. Yes. And so I start these course and one certification, another one, and another one. And then I was the only woman and the 
it was the certification for diving under ice. And uh, the guy say, oh, why don't you come? Come on, come on. And oh, my husband said, yes, if you go, I don't want to see it. Just don't tell anyone. <laughs> no, but believe me, when they did a film about that, uh, when I did my certification under ice, and uh, he was watching TV, and what did, did he see? It, he saw me getting out of the oh, hole. <laughs> wow. Uh, well, so, <laughs> you know, so then... When you at, at at some point in Quebec, you opened a retreat center of your yes, own. Yes, I did. And yes, I I, I opened a, a completely school on the street, uh, Maison de Zen. Uh, it's because uh, I I came after many retreats. I came back and uh, uh, Frère Jerome said, "That's enough uh, seeing you going there. Now you will teach us." <laughs> and uh, you know, serendipity. The same day, I said to Frère Jerome, no, Frère Jerome, you are a saint, I'm not. And if I do that, I want to be paid, and I don't want to do that in where you work. I want a good place with his light and, and blah, blah. In fact, is I didn't want to do it. And so I was giving all. So he said, let's have lunch together. And we went in uh, the... He saw the uh, superior, and um, the superior came to me, and he said, Mimi, there is the key. You have the room you want for any weekend in the mm. College Notre Dame. It was beautiful. And um, I said, yes, but now I, I want to be paid. He said, you will be. No problem. And uh, <laughs> I said, now he, uh, <laughs> I will have, I need the student fresh at home. said, you have your old class. You, we are 15 attending. <laughs> and I did that for, uh, what, 10 years, more than oh that. Oh, my gosh. But after it was not at the college, I was giving a really big retreat. So I was renting from uh, the nuns, mm -hmm. you know, room. But before that, I opened my own school on the, in Westmount on the street with martial art, with different um, style. And it stayed for a year. And uh, after that, I realized I had to make a choice between the life with my husband or the life in the <laughs> in uh, monastery and all that. And there were uh, pro inside problems. Uh, I suppose it was it didn't belong to me because it would add solve. And so that's you the way say I see that it. it didn't belong to you. So this brings me to something yeah. I have observed about you is that you use that expression a lot. And you tell me, you know, if it, if it belongs to you, you will have it. Exactly. And that's, that's, <laughs> that's a that's key part philosophy. of your life philosophy. Yes. Yes. And uh, so what, what that means to me is that, you know, um, no need for resistance or it, if relax it will it will come to you yes because i do you. believe so, the reality will take care of it yeah and there's so there's no need to worry about exactly. what may or may not happen we can just relax and enjoy the moment yes exactly yes. and things tend to turn out pretty well Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. But I, I had a very a big hole in that. <laughs> yeah. In between. So, um, talk about how you met your husband. <laughs> it was so sweet. Uh, I had, uh, I met other boys before, but... It, 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 how old were you when you met him? I met him, I was 17. Okay. No, 18. And... Um, uh, I was starting uh, the course uh, to be a nurse at the hospital, and uh, but the date I had, I, I was not happy with this guy. That's it. That's mm -hmm. all. And my sister, who was um, going to a swimming pool, met him, and he said to my sister, "If you had a a, a sister uh, like you." I will date her. Only older, right? Because my, yeah. And uh, because my sister was 13. And uh, it was his 
first blind date, his first date. So when he was a lifeguard at the yes, at the pool. lifeguard, and he was studying so he, to be he, a doctor. So he asked your little sister if she had an yeah. older sister. <laughs> yeah, and he was shy guy yeah. f- to have all these qualities. He was shy, and he called me, and believe me, I was watching in the window. When I saw him, I knew he would be my husband. I knew he would be my husband. And we went out for a movie and uh, a nice Sunday after. And uh, we were reading the same books, Dostoevsky. So we had something in common. So you happened to be both reading Dostoevsky yes. at the same time. And uh, he was, uh, he loves swimming and I love swimming. I was uh, certified at that time with the Red Cross. And um, so I asked him uh, for a, a cocktail I was giving during the weekend. A cocktail party. Cocktail yeah. party. And he said, oh, no. I said, um, I have so many years in front of me studying, so I'm afraid to fall in love, so, <laughs> so I won't go. I said, it's okay. It's up to you, but it will be at 5 o'clock, that address. Mm-hmm. And he was there at 4. <laughs> <laughs> well, some some. Powers we possess are greater than thought, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. There was another force that was drawing him to you. So, and you told me uh, that one time you asked him, many years later, you asked him what it was about you that he liked. And tell tell me what he said. Yes. Not long before he passed away, uh we used to have breakfast at the restaurant in the morning because we were able to talk and relax before he go to the hospital. And uh, I asked him one morning, I he said... He was a doctor. Yeah, he was a doctor, specialist, allergist, and the chief of the hospital. And uh, I asked him, uh, Claude, why, what do you like about me? Because he, he really spoiled me, I have to admit, on every <laughs> sense. And uh, I said, what do you like? I'm not like the, uh, your colleague's wife. I never wash wa- uh, dishes. I never do anything in the house, but always been like a princess. And, and he said, Mimi, what I love so much about you, it's your fantasy. You're a fantasy. Yes. Yeah. 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 He and- really... He really loved you. Oh, yes. Definitely. He was captivated by you. Oh, yes. Definitely. I, and I was with, too. Yes, mm. yes. So, and you told me, one of the things you said to me when we talked before is that you definitely weren't a doctor's wife. What did you mean by that? I mean, uh, a person who uh, does his uh, washing on Monday, is uh, ironing <laughs> on Tuesday, and... Um, uh, <laughs> you had your own life, and you were always going to have your own life. Yes, definitively, yeah. yes. And you respect that, too, which is, I realize, uh, not <laughs> the story of everyone. Right. So um, so you had two children, Michael yes. and Genevieve. Yes. And where are they? Uh, Genevieve is uh, teaching mathematics. She has two children. She's um, in Pennsylvania. Uh, they were born, uh, uh, born in the United States, and we gave them the two citizenship. Oh, that's great. So that's why when my, pa- my husband passed away, I asked uh, right away to become American. But I have to admit, i always been pro-American. Yeah. Yeah, I love Canada. There's no no doubt, Quebec. But uh, oh yeah, so, Americans don't know what they are. So how did you find your way to South Florida? Uh, it's because my uh, son um, was in uh, South Florida, and um, he was in a divorce at that time. And I came because I really want the children to stay with their father. Mm-hmm. You wanted to support yeah, him. Yeah, because the, the ex-wife, who was a very nice person, wanted to go and live in Chicago. And um, I, I came here, and she, it was so great to have these two children. Oh. So how many years ago was that, Mimi? 14 years ago. 
So yeah. 2005. Yes. So you've been here a long time. I love it. Yeah. yeah but I've been uh, traveling. I went uh, in India after and uh, South America, back to Europe. Oh, no, I've been, you know. Mm-hmm. So now I've been to your home several times now. Yes. And every time I come, there's different artwork hanging on the wall. <laughs> so you're, you're always painting. Yes. So tell me, what does a day in your life look like? What's the typical day for Mimi Langlois? Uh, I, I, um, I spend many times, many hours in the morning um, to be in silence. To me, silence is very important because from silence, I go to the unknown. And... Uh, that's where is my life. Mm. And that's what is my expression from, the unknown, which is, I call, the real knowing. <laughs> yes. You have a lot of interesting expressions. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, from, and, and it starts by just sometimes just uh, listening uh, and from the listening, it, it just get in the uh, silence, and from silence it goes to the pure knowing. And then, so now, how does that translate into artwork? Because uh, so you begin the day in silence. For yes, and then I have my own to... breakfast by myself, okay. and um, then uh, I do my art mostly. Uh, not every day, but mostly. And I love to read, too. I'm a big reader. Uh, okay. At this moment, I'm reading uh, Aruki Murakami, which is, to me, the greatest modern writer actual. Murakami. Oh, yes. Okay. Aruki Murakami. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, anyhow. Um, and I love, I, I met people here, and uh, I have different uh, activity too, and I go for um, uh, yoga. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you keep busy. Always been. And I always find the time to. Always find the time to paint? To do everything I want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, you know, one of the reasons that I wanted to do this this podcast is, you know, it's very personal for me because one of the uh, challenges in my life is, is that when I was young, I was very impressionable and I didn't really have the sense of self-worth to follow my heart or to follow my intuition. So I, you know, was... Uh, I was uh, inclined to listen to the people who discouraged me from doing the things that I really wanted to do. And uh, it's taken me a long time to get back to who I really am. And this podcast is part of that. And and one of the reasons why I wanted to talk to you, I want to talk to people who are self-actualized, people who are really true to themselves and you are definitely someone I see is very <laughs> true to yourself. So, you know, saying all that, if you, you know, met a younger friend or if you had something to pass on to someone who's trying to figure out their life, what would you say to him or her? Please listen to your heart. It never be wrong. It will never be wrong. Yes. Mm. And don't worry, the, your intellect and your art, you will have the, the rational in the heart. The communication will come by itself. If you allow yes. it and you listen for it, yes, right? Yes, yes. But silence is important. Silence is just, it's, it's so easy. It seems to be uh, strange, but... Just to 
listen, sit down and listen to your feet. Listen to your body. Let it be. And it, it, silence will come by itself. And you won't know, but you, you will go. It will be easy. Well, and it's it's such a challenge, I think, in our culture now to be grounded in that way because there are so many stimuli we have. And uh, the, the most dramatic expression of that is these handheld computers that we're all carrying around. You know, <laughs> we're always accessible. Yes. And, uh, you know, I often think about when I'm meeting someone new or communicating with someone and there's all this text messaging going on and the immediacy of that. And, and, uh, and, you know, sometimes my son, when, when the internet is down, the Wi-Fi is down and he'll just keep tapping his screen thinking, you know, he doesn't understand, you know, I grew up where, you know, we mailed letters to each other <laughs> and we called each other on the phone and and people couldn't just avoid each other. They, you know, they answered the phone and had to tell you they don't want to talk to you if they don't want to talk to you. And uh, it's just a very different world now where, you know, it's harder to relax and tune out and and find silence because there's so many forces out there that want to keep us distracted. Yes, but uh, when I'm talking about silence, it, I I don't mean it's uh, like uh, honey all the time. It's uh, right. just to be aware, aware when it, it hurts. Just be aware and be confident in yourself. It hurts, it's okay. Let, let it be hurts, and you will see at the end what will happen. Yes, and... and <laughs> You yeah. know, because the hurt is what we're avoiding with all those exactly. distractions. And even yeah. myself, sometimes I, I catch myself, oh my God, look at me, I'm running right, left. And I realize, uh-oh, sit down for a few minutes, okay? And yeah. let it be your anxious or your insecurity or uh, someone uh, told me something I didn't like. <laughs> And uh, I was not uh, present at myself at that moment, so I let that thing hurt me. So just let it be. And uh, but it's life who learns. We learn day after day. And don't worry, you will always have someone or something to tell you. Whoop! That's yeah. enough. <laughs> well, and you know. Um... One of the things I've learned um, about our emotional experience is that, you know, when I experience periods of sadness or, um, or whatnot, uh, it can feel, at times, it can feel exhausting. Exactly. But what I have learned is that it's not the emotion itself that exhausts us. It's our resistance exactly. to it that is exhausting. <laughs> yes. And you, so you, it, 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 it takes that. patience and it takes silence to actually be mindful of your emotions. And when you feel disturbed, to allow yourself to be disturbed and, and to let it pass through you. And what I've learned and what I That's believe the is, secret. That's is, is the that secret. if we don't do that, if we don't allow it to pass through us, then we carry it in our bodies. Yeah. And then, you know, you see it. You can, if you really watch people when you walk through life, you can see the people who are carrying that around. They're tense. You can see it in their faces, you know, the stress. And that, so going back to you and the way that you light up the room, it's because you go into silence and you take care of yourself spiritually and emotionally. And it wouldn't be that you wouldn't light up a room if you didn't do that. You wouldn't I, have I, that I, gleam I, in your eyes. I, exactly. Yes. But uh, the, to me, the only I realized today, the only way I can help the other one is by being myself. There is no way, uh, not, uh, to me, there is no intention to help someone. It's just to be myself. 
that it will work. It's like the sun. It doesn't say, I want to light this one, that one, or that flower. No, it's just the sun. Yeah. And that's the way I, that's what I realized today. And it's great because I've been, uh, when I start with Buddhists, I want to change everyone. I want everyone to paint. I want everyone to uh, do Buddhists. <laughs> and then I realized, whoop, yeah. yes, I'm in the wrong way. Yes, yeah. because I don't want to see everything. myself. I didn't accept myself. That's the, the problem. Well, and that's another big lesson that I've learned. <laughs> is when something bothers me that I see in someone else, it's, it's me. Exactly. It's me that's yes. bothering me. Yes. That's a, you know, there's some tough lessons we learn in life. But when you, we are alert... Uh, we meet. We meet always the person to help us on that. You know. Yes. Uh, I found you yeah. and uh, that group. Yeah, the universe. Uh, oh, so oh yeah, I call that serendipity. Yeah. And uh, it's. I'm so grateful. So grateful. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, this has been a beautiful conversation, and. Uh, Maybe we can do it again sometime. I'm sure we'll talk one way or the other, yes. with or without the microphones. But I really appreciate you taking the time. And uh, before we end, I want you to talk about where someone can find your work. Uh, at this moment, I have, um, f for five years now, I'm with the DTR Gallery uh, in uh, Palm Beach. Uh, and they also have locations in New York and yes, yes, one, but so. they have a, but they have many artists. So I only one, I only have one painting at a time. But uh, they can see me on. Um, you can see all my work on uh, Facebook and Instagram. And uh, if uh, you're really interesting, you, you can uh, reach me by uh, my website. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can always arrange something, right. you know, through my gallery, or we will see. Yeah. Uh, because uh, at this moment, I'm uh, ready to have an an exhibit, a, a big exhibit. Uh, but when it will be really for me, it will open the door. Yes. That's yes. the way I see it. it will. Uh, I don't stop um, create saying uh, for a, a show or for a gallery no they they come and uh, you know it happens when it happens oh it happens for 50 years <laughs> <laughs> well and so yeah. if if listeners want to get a look at your work um there's a, a page on my blog that features a slideshow of your a lot of that's examples very nice of your work. thank you very much and uh and also um your instagram handle there's a link to your instagram profile yes. on my website and your and your website and i also uh provided a link to the gallery so listeners can find you know yeah, but they can yeah. go through you yeah. and then you can come to if me if they would like to and uh, absolutely we can uh, manage that there's no i'm open okay all right <laughs> well thank you mimi uh, i really I really appreciate you. it <laughs> bye All right, that's Mimi. You can find out more about Mimi by following the links in the show description. You can follow the show on Instagram or like us on Facebook, both at The Path to Authenticity. You can contact me via email. The address is thepathtoauthenticity at gmail.com. Uh, visit our Patreon page. Uh, if you like, there's some little perks for becoming a patron that you can learn all about there. Um, thanks for listening. And if you enjoyed the show and you'd be so kind, please rate it or review it or both on your platform of choice. Right now we're on uh, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, um, 
shortly we'll be on Spotify and you'll be able to listen to the shows on YouTube as well. Um, not sure where we'll go after that, but, um, plenty of options for you all. So again, thanks for listening. I appreciate you taking the time. Um, until the next time, um, be nice. Path to Authenticity is powered by Equivox. For digital marketing and web design services, visit Equivox.com.